Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be talking about when that final trailer is going to come, because it is officially 8 days from Supergirl's premiere. Also, we're going to be going over the new casting for the season, because they just cast a new actor to play a Kryptonian. Apparently, we know this Kryptonian, so we're going to be going over that. Also, they've released a new synopsis for episode 2 of season 6. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so yeah, we got a few things to go over. First things first, let's talk about the trailer. So, I addressed this on my stream the other day, we stream every Thursday. This week we changed it to a Friday, that was just a one-off, but we'll be streaming again this Thursday. 9 p.m. UK time, that means 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Translate it to wherever you guys are if you want to tune in. But I wanted to properly go over it in a proper video and actually address when this Supergirl trailer is coming out because people have been asking, when is it finally going to come out? Because it's nearly a week. Like, tomorrow's going to be a week from the premiere. And so, why haven't they released a Supergirl trailer? Because by now, like, The Flash, when it was coming back for season 7, just like a month ago or so, they released a trailer, like, at least two weeks in advance. Superman Lois and Batwoman released their trailers, like, a month or three weeks in advance. So why isn't Supergirl getting a trailer? Well, I'm not 100% sure as to the specifics, because I don't have any insider information about why they haven't dropped a trailer, but I'm gonna say, it's going to be very, very strange if they don't release a trailer by tomorrow, which is Tuesday night. So, obviously, that means The Flash is coming back, Superman and Lois is coming back, and if they don't drop a trailer tomorrow, I don't think we're going to get a trailer. And I'm fairly confident we're going to get a trailer tomorrow because Superman and Lois is going off. This is Superman and Lois's last episode for seven weeks, and they're going to want to promote Supergirl being like, instead of Superman and Lois, next week, Tuesday, March 30th, Supergirl returns. So I'm going to say, please be sure to tune in tomorrow to The Flash and Superman Lois, because I really do think that they're going to drop that Supergirl trailer tomorrow. And what is going to be including in the trailer? Probably footage from episode one. Normally with these trailers, they do incorporate a little bit from the other episodes. However, if it does air on the CW, it's not going to be a very long trailer. It'll be like 30 seconds long. So it won't be like the extended one we got for The Flash or Superman Lois or Batwoman. And it's just going to be a shorter normal promo for Supergirl saying, yes, it is premiering on March 30th. So I do think it's weird how they haven't pushed anything really in regards to the trailer. However, they have been pushing it on social media and online. So that's the big difference, apart from there not being a trailer, they have actually been promoting it. The showrunners have done interviews, I covered that in yesterday's video. They've released synopsis for two episodes, they've released a lot of photos, and they've released that big poster, and they've been promoting it on social media. So there has been a push for Supergirl, the only thing they're missing is a trailer. So obviously that's left people up in the air, being like, are we actually going to get a trailer or not? because people are comparing it to Black Lightning and its final season because the CW is basically not even promoting it. Like, they're not even bothering to create new promos week to week. So people are like, is this going to happen to Supergirl? Well, I think it is because Supergirl is a very profitable show for the CW, and I think it's definitely worth it for them to spend the money on creating promos week to week and creating an actual trailer for tomorrow. So, yeah. What do you guys think about all of this? Let me know down in the comments below. Okay, so look forward to all of that. Okay, so there is actually one thing before we go over to the other castings and the synopsis. There was a casting for young Cat Grant the other day, and so the casting is for Eliza Helm, who is going to be appearing in at least episode 5 and episode 6. That is the two-part flashback episode to Midvale, and the young Kara and Alex are going to be showing up once again, so that's called Prom Night and Prom Again. Prom Again is going to be directed by Kyla Lee, and so she is going to be playing a young version of Cat Grant, and she's going to be going by CJ Grant in these days. And so the character is described as eager to step out of Lois Lane's shadow and out from under her boss, Perry White's thumb. Cat chases a story to Kara's hometown of Midvale. This lead won't go as planned, but it will put her on the trajectory towards the media powerhouse we know and love as Cat Grant. So it's very exciting that Cat Grant is going to be coming back in some form for the final season. It's good to know that they're trying to get some of these characters back, even if they can't get the normal actors back. So I like that they've gone 
and introduced her in the past. And that's definitely going to show us a different angle of the character, how she was like back then. Obviously, she's going by CJ Grant, which is uh, kind of funny. And she's probably going to be stumbling across young Kara and young Alex Danvers. I don't know if she'll remember her in the future. However, it's going to be exciting to see what she does. And I didn't know that Lois Lane was a journalist for this long, but she is referred to as being shadowing over Cat Grant at the Daily Planet and obviously Perry White who is like the editor-in-chief at the Daily Planet. But I guess it's exciting to see that they are kind of crossing over with Superman and Lois in a weird way because, you know, the actual synopsis for her character literally references Lois Lane, so I think that is very, very exciting. And so she's going to be chasing a story that leads her to Midvale. So, looking forward to this flashback episode, I can't wait to see this version of Cat Grant. Let's go ahead and go over to the Kryptonian casting. So, Supergirl casts Claude Knowlton and Jason Bear, and they're going to be two recurring characters. Obviously, they're going to be playing different people, but, you know, the announcement came at the same time. So, they're going to be getting some help from two new allies who are heading to National City. So, Jason Bear is going to be playing a Kryptonian and Claude Knowlton will be playing a mild-mannered alien whose tragic past allows him to help the super friends with their mission at hand. So let's talk about his casting first. So that doesn't give away that much apart from him being an alien and he's going to be helping out with the super friends for at least a couple of episodes. From what it seems, he's going to be in less of the show than Jason's character. So I definitely think Knowlton's alien is just going to appear a couple of times. He's going to be aiding at one point. And from what this synopsis teases, I think this could be leaked to that Rosemary character that was being auditioned a while ago. Because in that audition, she was talking to someone who had a past of her. And I definitely felt like that guy, whoever he was, obviously it was just like someone auditioning and basically reading out his lines, might be this guy's character. So that's just me theorizing. And obviously there isn't too much details as to his character apart from him being an alien and me suggesting that he might be somehow linked to this Rosemary character who we might see this season in Supergirl. Okay, so let's move on to the most important thing. So Jason Bear, he's from Roswell, New Mexico. Maybe you guys know him. He's quite a well-known actor. He's going to be playing a bigger part. He will only be recurring, so he's not going to be a series regular and show up in every episode, but he's going to show up in at least a couple of episodes, probably more than a couple because he's been in Vancouver for quite a while. And so his character will be a famous or noted Kryptonian who plays a significant role helping Kara when she faces circumstances beyond her control. The character name is being kept under wraps. So now this comes into my theory and I did address this on my live stream the other day as to my theory. Okay, so episode one of this season is titled Rebirth. And so what does Rebirth relate to? Well, recently in the comics, they had DC Rebirth where they rebooted all of their comics continuity and so naturally Supergirl had their own Supergirl rebirth and the main villain at the start of Supergirl rebirth was in fact Zor-El, Kara's father. And with this guy being confirmed to be a Kryptonian, there is a limited amount of characters that he could be but the main thing that backs up my point about him potentially being Zor-El is the fact that in Jesse Raff's birthday video a while ago we saw a Kryptonian looking person, we couldn't identify the actor. I'm presuming that was Jason actually on the set. So he was inside the tower, obviously hinting that this guy is an ally, but he was wearing Kryptonian clothing that was all blue, just like Sorel. And it's very, very possible that they could have recast Sorel because that is a thing that they're doing right now. Like even Batwoman just recast Kate Kane. So that is like a consistent thing in the Arrowverse right now. The CW isn't shy on recasting characters like even Kara's mom, Allura Zorel, was recast. So what happens if this is an alternate version of Zorel who survived after Crisis and somehow he got stranded on Earth Prime and he makes his way to Kara and basically establishes that connection? And so, like it says in the description, he is a Kryptonian who plays a significant role helping Kara when she faces circumstances beyond her control. Who would probably do that? Well, I think a good character would be a father figure or like, you know, if Allura was around, it would be Allura. So I think it's very possible with him being confirmed as being a Kryptonian character that what we saw in those set photos definitely lines up with this and he could be Zor-El. And 
because episode one is titled Rebirth, what happens if he turns out to be the main villain? They do a kind of zoom thing where you have Jay Garrick being a good guy in the flash and then eventually it's revealed he is Zoom, he is the bad guy, he's not actually Jay Garrick, he's Hunter Zolomon. So what happens if Zor-El eventually becomes a villain and has been working under their noses? So I think that's a really good theory and I really like that idea. Let me know, what do you guys think about that? Do you think Jason is going to be playing Zor-El or not? So without further ado, let's go on to the last thing in this video. So this is for A Few Good Women. This is the episode 2 synopsis of season 6. So it goes like this, the breaking point. As the stakes with Lex are raised higher than ever before, Lena must decide how far she is willing to go to stop her brother. Meanwhile, Supergirl and the team are forced to face a challenge unlike anything they've ever dealt with before and it brings Alex to her breaking point. So this is episode 2, this is coming in April, so what does this synopsis tell us? Well, obviously this is going to be heavily on the women of Supergirl because it's titled A Few Good Women. And as the synopsis suggests, Lena is going to be heavy in this episode as she tries to deal with what is happening with Lex. Like, she is deciding how far is she going to go. Is she going to kill him? Is she going to lock him away? Is she just going to knock him out or something? Like, what is her actual plans to stop her brother? So, it's confirmed that Lex is going to be around in this episode. He's still going to be wreaking havoc. And so, meanwhile, Supergirl and the team are forced to face a challenge unlike anything they've ever dealt with before. So, I'm not sure if that's in regards to Lex or if this is like another villain, but it's interesting to note that Supergirl is mentioned here, so that means that they've gone back, they've shot some extra stuff, because if you guys didn't know, episode 2, they didn't shoot back in March, they shot this recently. So Melissa's obviously gone back, they've got enough footage to make her a big part of this episode, although it's going to be heavily featured and focused on Lex and Lena. And then you have another huge part of the episode, which is Alex, because as the synopsis says, it brings Alex to her breaking point. So something is going on that's going to affect Alex in a big way. And I don't have any specific ideas as to what that is, but whatever this threat is, it's obviously going to be very personal for Alex. So yeah, that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss any videos. Also, if you want to join a monthly Zoom call which is going to be happening this Saturday with me and your fellow members, we're going to be hopping onto Zoom and talking about all the shows just together. Please be sure to become a member by clicking the join button if you want to jump in because now is the time. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.